Yeah, I think that was it. And avocados. So there's just, you know, I'd get to the food box and there'd be all these sort of treats in there and I'd eat them first because I was really kind of jonesing for some taste and then, and then I'd head back out onto the trail with my trail food and, you know, that would last me three, four, five days and then I'd get into the post office again and eat some more yummy things because these towns were tiny, man. I mean, you know, you'd be lucky if you could find some oatmeal there. So really? there was certainly hardly anything in the way of raw foods that I could get at these towns. So I needed to really have everything shipped to me in the post offices if I wanted to do this on raw foods. And I wanted to do it on raw foods just because I wanted to kind of see if it could be done. And um, No cooked food the entire time? No. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, and I was definitely jonesing for taste at the end, but so was everyone else. You know, everybody that was eating normal food. I don't know why I like to think that raw foods is normal food and cooked food is like, why would you ever want to do that to perfectly good food? <laughs> anyways, <laughs> but anyways, the people that ate cooked food, they were all Jones and for like the things they're used to, like pizza and, you know, whatever the heck they were used to eating, they were all just dying. They'd get to a town and just go pig out at these restaurants eating, you know. I'd see guys get like half gallons of ice cream and just down the whole half gallon right there. It's unbelievable wow. what people would eat. Wow. And that's just because, you know, I was walking like 30 miles a day, and, and you know, you walk that kind of mileage a day, you work up some serious calorie needs. And um, so people were eating in just enormous amounts of food. I really wasn't eating in enormous amounts of food, interestingly enough. Um, I'd get to those towns and I wouldn't be doing any of that sort of huge pig outs. I'd just be eating maybe a little more than I did while I was on the trail, just out of the treats and the, that were in the box. And then I'd uh, head back out onto the trail. So, you know, the raw foods just seemed to um, really do well for my body. I didn't need to eat massive quantities of foods. And, and I walked 30 miles a day and I didn't hardly lose any weight. I ended up just maybe about five pounds less than I did when I started. So And good energy the whole time. Yeah, I mean, I was, you know... I walked like 42 miles one day, so. Wow. You know, it's just, I was. At first, did you have, uh, were, there, were there trying times at first, and you were kind of like, I don't know if this is a good idea? Um, not really. There was never really a time when I was struggling physically. Um, I mean, I started out walking maybe 20 miles a day, and I mean, you know, people say, well, my God, why, did you, why would you want to walk that much in a day? You know, it's just, it didn't really even me. It's like I, I just love walking and I felt like I'd wake up in the morning and I'd flick this little switch, you know, to get my legs going and then I'd just forget about my body and I'd just walk and I'd feel like I was in this like, um, uh, just, you know, Disneyland ride going along this, this little trail and this little car that was my body just looking at all these beautiful things and, you know, I'd just wake up every day and I loved it so much I just wanted to walk all day. That's what I did. I just, you know, I just, I just love it, and uh, so yeah, I, I just really enjoyed the whole experience. Well, reading the letters that you wrote back via email, I don't know how you achieved all that, but boy, I mean, the stuff you would say with that you were just blown away by these sunsets and and just being with nature, the awe of it all, and yeah, they were very moving. Moving tales. Yeah, I was in a pretty moving state, I guess you could say. I mean, you know, it's like if, you, if all you have coming in to your eyes on a sun up to sun down for four and a half months is beauty, you know, you're going to be transformed on some level. And not that there weren't times where the scenery was not, was a little less than beautiful, because there were times when it was, you know, big clear cuts in Washington. Um, you know, sometimes in the desert, some of the terrain, just you know, the heat just got overwhelming. Um, and it was just in the vast majority of those four and a half months, the major thing coming into my eyes was beautiful sights. And I wasn't, you know, getting um, all this negativity coming at me like we have in the society. You watch the news, you read the newspaper, you listen to the radio. You know, blah, 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 such and such was killed, you know, we're going into Afghanistan. All this negativity, all this fear coming at you. I didn't have any of that, you know, I didn't see any TV, I didn't hear any radio, I didn't read any newspapers. So, uh, the only thing that was coming into me, I mean, into my awareness was just the beauty of nature. And what a time it was. <laughs> I mean, it was just awesome. <laughs> what can I say, you know, it was just bliss. And How much of the perspective that you shared with me today do you think was influenced by this trip? 
I think it was influenced dramatically. Something big happened to me on this trip um, because, well, first of all, um, I had incredible enthusiasm and excitement for doing this trip. And so I followed that. Um, so it was a soul desire. It was a soul, um, it was a very soulful desire that I had. And I followed it. And it led me to some really interesting places. Like, you know, you'll always be led to interesting places if you follow those soul desires. But what happened on this trip was um, I got into some sticky situations a few times. And just all this magic happened, you know. And I realized that as I walked, I just... I kept my intent on getting to Canada, and I started in Mexico. It was 2,600 miles through the mountains of California, Oregon, and Washington. So I just, the whole time I was walking, I just said, well, you know what? I want to walk to Canada. That's what I want to do. And then I just sort of sit down or, you know, just sort of think about it, and I'd be like, but my God, how am I ever going to do it? You know, it's like, that's a long ways. I'm bound to twist an ankle. Maybe I'll get sick. Maybe I'll get sick of my food. Something's bound to happen. I mean, how am I ever going to walk this far? You know, so all these doubts would come up. But then I just let them go and I just keep my attention on like just this inner power, this inner strength. It was just like, well, you know, you know, I want to walk to Canada and I know that you can get me there, you know. And even though all these doubts are coming up and obstacles, there are lots of obstacles that came up, I just kept my attention on that inner power. And sure enough, I got to Canada, you know. And, and it's just like, so that really solidified, like, this beginning understanding of, like, who I am. It's like, you know what? That's how I create my reality. It's just like, wherever I put my attention, that's what the universe says. Well, okay, that must be what he wants, so let's send him that, you know. And so... Um, if you keep your attention on your intention, whatever your intention is, then the universe just says, well, that must be what they want, so it gives it to you, you know, and, and so it's just, it's just sort of, it was an, an amazing way for me to kind of ground the beginning dawnings of, you know, it's just like who I am, and um, so it was just a great way to do it, I might add, you know, yeah. walking through the yeah. woods, yeah. all this beautiful scenery, yeah. you know. <laughs> So, um, and you met a lot of other people on the way. You'd travel certain short distances with different sets of folks. And yeah, yeah, I met I met some great people. I was just actually showing my slides um, to a friend that I met on the trail who came through Denver and stopped off at my place last night. And uh, so, yeah, I met a bunch of people. And because there's probably two, three hundred people that um, start this thing every year, and uh, I met those folks. You know, a good maybe half of them. Hundred yeah. people, I'd say I met. They're not all raw food folks. No, I mean there was a couple of people. This fellow that was there last night actually had read about raw foods, was interested in it, and we traveled together for a couple hundred miles. And you know, I just showed him my food trip, and he's like, "Well, yeah, here's someone who's doing it, so yeah, obviously it can be done. So I'm going to try it." You know, he was excited about checking it out, and so I saw him today, and he just looked totally different. You know, really? his whole his face had just gotten thinner. His he he just looked brighter. And that's the only way I could describe it. I notice that a lot with raw foods. When people first start on raw foods, their whole complexion changes, their bodies change. Um, it's just something I observe. Huh. You know, so. And are these people that are, um, you would say that most of these people that you notice these good changes are, are not of the obsessive nature that we were talking about, really, you know? No, I, I even notice good, healthy changes with people who are really stressed out about even though. stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know, I think, I think that, uh, I think it's an amazing way to eat, what can I say? Mm -hmm. I just refuse to make the statement that it's for everyone, because mm -hmm. that would be um, basically saying that I know what's best for someone else mm -hmm. and taking their power away. Mm -hmm. And, um, I refuse to do that. 